Hi, Luminaires. Happy Sunday. We are coming at you live to bring you the channeled August energy update on a Sunday, which is kind of bizarre. So Colleen is off screen. Say hi to Colleen. Hi, everyone. Here I am. <laughs> and while I'm chatting at the beginning here, I would love for you to type in the chat thread if you can hear us okay. We've got our mics set up. So I want to make sure that you can hear me okay and that you can hear Colleen okay. Um, so it is awkward gathering on a Sunday to do some of this work and wrapping up summer and kind of changing gears. There, there's so much in the air shifting. And I'm interested in hearing this energy update. We've been talking about it briefly beforehand. I don't know much. If you are new to the channel, my name is Jamie Butler. I am a medium and a trance channel. I've been doing this over 30 years globally. I love it. It's a passion of mine to help people wake up and to normalize our woo-woo, being intuitive, having gut instincts, you know, being able to see and engage with energy and, and collect that information and use that on a daily basis, to me is something very norm. And I like talking about it that way. I do have a series coming up, Perceiving and Reading Energy, if you want to learn how to perceive it, which doesn't mean just to see. So empathics out there, get excited because we're gonna talk a lot about that in this series. And you wanna learn how to read it. What does it mean? How to translate that? Come join me. It's over on Learn It Live. We'll put the link somewhere. But I don't want to hold you up. We're going to talk about energy for August. And Maitland's going to come through and channel. She's going to talk to you about the chakras that are going to be challenged, needed, and supported the most for the month. She'll talk about what crystals and their energy will help you just kind of embody and use that energy that's coming in for the month so that you can... Um, I want to say surf it instead of drown in it because it's going to be a lot. She'll also give you some aromatherapy tips, uh, also equaling the energy for the month of August. And if you are new, uh, Maitland is a younger spirit, presents herself very silly, uh, full of laughter, metaphors, and some symbols. Like, I mean, and so if that is up your alley that you want to hear what's happening with the energy in August and that slant of, fun and playfulness, you've landed in the right place. And a lot of what she shares is applicable. No, I put a total syllable, new syllable in there, <laughs> but you can just take it and use it right away. It's not something that you have to learn or get used to. It's just digestible. She takes these large concepts and just boils them down. So even if you're watching this and the recording, I'm going to be doing a trance channel and we are hooked and connected no matter where you are in time and space because we're holding space for each other, giving and receiving. So if you're feeling lightheaded or very sensitive when I go into trans channeling and you like it, ride it, use it, love it, enjoy it. If you're starting to feel really sensitive and maybe a little lightheaded and you don't enjoy it, try drinking some hot tea or some coffee or maybe nibbling on a little bit of chocolate or simply just taking long, deep, steady breaths and just stay in your body. Okay, here we go. Colleen, is there anything else? Not that I can think of. Yeah? You're good. Okay. Oh, God. I think Mainland's ready to come in. Is she? I feel it, yes. I feel a lot lighter. <laughs> I came in with a lot of heavy energy, like, what? So I'm going to enjoy this. I won't see you afterwards, so I'm going to personally say my goodbyes now. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and welcome, Mainland. Enjoy. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, breathing. I'm going to take one more deep breath. If you want to join me, go for it. If you're wanting to observe energy, check around here. That's where I tend to leave. Maitland drops in. Couldn't stop it. It just kept coming and coming. This is like the biggest yawn ever. I wonder if they have that in the almanac as the biggest yawn. 
or like the longest yawn? You mean the Guinness Book of World the Records? The Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> What's the almanac? Like the Farmer's Almanac? Is like, oh, yeah. that weather and stuff. Oh, the Guinness Like book the moon cycles and the planting. <laughs> Wait, that would be funny. if it They was would have your yawn that. in there. That would make it, you know, interesting. <laughs> My yawn changes weather across the world. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of changing of weather luminaires. Like in probably late August all the way through like October. Um, when is the solar, is it a solar eclipse? There's an eclipse in October around the 25th. And so between those bookends, there's going to be a lot of crazy different weather. And then it's also the same energy that creates these unique weather, like um, earthquakes or hurricanes and tornadoes. Um, it's the same energy that's going to give a boost to like mechanical inventions. Like, how do I say new computer designs, new robots, things of that nature, technology. And so it's it's exciting times and nervous times at the, the same moment. But um, but we're not here to really talk about that. We're here to talk about August 2022 energy. And if you were with me last month, I was like, oh, there's a sweet spot and and you'll be really happy about August, just not really the first week. The first week is kind of scooping up the energy that you've been going through for like the last 10 days or so. And that energy is very, um, can I put a face to it? It's like this. <laughs> You're like, I'm not going to avoid it. I'm gonna go face in but I'm definitely not smiling about it and I'm white knuckled and I'm grabbing on so that I don't slide off my chair like this. Um, but that energy is gonna continue through the first week of August, but there is a great silver lining that's coming. So you can name August the silver lining or the like hope. That's kind of a nice word to put on it. So for the first week, you're going to have more of that challenged energy. First of all, you're being challenged right now. Every single one of you, look left, it's that person. Look right, that person's going through it too. These are not just the sensitives get to struggle. <laughs> it's not like that. Uh, it's everybody. Hey, look at the animal to the left of you. It's going through it too. Look at the animal to the right of you. It's going through it as well. The whole earth is doing it. So we talked about that big galactic new energy, the photonic light that's coming through and just bathing the earth. And it's going to be our new normal and our new steady. And this energy that's coming in, it's high frequency. So it's meaning we on earth used to, I'm just going to put myself in the storyline because it's easier to talk that way instead of like pointing fingers out and going you because it makes you sound at fault, but we're with you. So I'm going to include myself. Um, we on earth have been used to living in a lower frequency dimension and there's nothing wrong with that. It was very happy to be in that and we're used to it. When change happens, and it's not told to us, it can be very unsettling. There's no real education going around. You know, there's no, um, oh, what do you call it when your cell phone beeps really loud and it gives you an emergency message? An emergency message like that? Oh, I heard it. Like a warning? A warning. Eh, 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 eh. I heard it the other day and it was so loud, it scared all of us. Um, we were working and it was crazy. Um, so there's nothing like that that shows up as an alert on your phone or your computer that says, the frequencies of the earth are changing by five degrees or five decimals higher than you're used to. So deep breaths and you will manage. There's nothing like that. So it's happening and all of a sudden you're responding to it. And then you start to ask, why am I being this way? Why do I feel like this? Why am I acting like this? Why am I sleeping too much is some reaction? Why am I more frustrated or angry or loud? That's another kind of reaction. 
why do I feel separated from myself? Even though I'm living in my body, I don't feel like I'm in my body. That's another common reaction as well. And um, we don't know to look at the increased frequencies that the earth is experiencing. But I want you to imagine it's not the earth creating those frequencies and pushing them out. Now, the earth does have a heartbeat and the earth does have frequencies that it makes. But think if you were the earth. Like there you are as an individual, you're the earth. You have your own frequencies inside of you and your own chakras and your own layers of light and energy that you work with and you have a physical body. But you are also responding to how people are talking to you, the information that's coming at you, the environment, the color, the experience that you're having. You're taking that and you're using it, digesting it and changing it and you're pushing it back out. So in a way, you're like an amplifier or... A, you're co-creating to take the frequencies that are outside of you to accept them, shift them, and push them back out. Okay, so we can understand that we do that as um, humans. And then we look at the Earth. The Earth is doing the same thing. The Earth is taking the energies from all the other planets and the systems and the stars and so forth. And it's taking that energy in, and it's using it, and it's changing it, and it's pushing it back out. It's amplifying it. So not only are you a part of the receiving of the energy from space, atmosphere, into the earth, you receive it. You're also the receiver when the earth pushes it back out. So I'm sharing this because the energy that's coming in is very steady and it's a very high frequency. It's not wavering like, oh, like the ocean does, big wave, no wave, small wave, big wave. There's no rhythm like that. It's just constantly big wave and it's steady. And so the earth is taking it and trying to digest it and push it back out. And when we're in a new frequency and it's so consistent, it can be really rattling to your, your body, to your mental body and to your emotional body. So with knowing that's what's happening, if you can imagine that frequency, the, the photonic light coming in at a higher frequency, very, very steady, and it's moving through you, coming into the earth, and the earth is amplifying it out, and you're reactive to all of these, then it can help you understand why all of a sudden, and especially in August, you'll be going through this um, because of the way the planets are aligned and that high steady frequency, it's co-creating intense creativity. Um, so you'll be experiencing some of the creativity um, for August, but you'll be aware of why it's happening and how to stay more present with it. I think it's difficult to stay very present with change because it's so new and you don't exactly know where it's taking you or where it's going to help you land. And so you just kind of grip and you hold on. Like I was mentioning, the white knuckle and the. And so some of you with this frequency coming in, you'll feel as if you are living in a multiple timeline. Like you're having very clear memories of what life would have been if you would have made a different choice because you're linking into that parallel existence. Or some of you are clearly remembering another lifetime altogether, different name, different location, different timeline, but you're remembering it very clear so you feel like you're in two places. And then some of you are getting hit with this energy and instead of processing it like a psychic awakening, you're like a psychic awakening would be the third eye. And the third eye is something to pay attention to for this month. Um, the crown is being supported. The third eye is needed big time. Um, and so you'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but then I forgot what I was just saying because I'm doing my very best to talk extremely linear when I just want to give you a bunch of information. And um, I'll let you know that 
if you're a member of the YouTube channel, you can talk with me and, and let me know if what I'm saying is making sense or if you have questions about the topic that uh, Colleen is here and she can help us um, clarify anything that you need to know more if I'm not saying it clear enough. Boy, I don't even know if that was clear. You got it. You're good. <laughs> um, so with um, those changes, what was he saying? Because you can remember different parallel lives and multi-dimensions and then changes in your own life. Different ways to take an energy. Julia oh, was saying yeah. you were saying a third way of taking the energy. Yeah, instead of taking it, um, some of you might not be aware of going, I'm reacting differently or I'm feeling off. Let me look at it as a spiritual awakening. Thank you, Julia. Um, instead of your ego will, your identity, like how you name yourself and who you are, the ego will take those shifts and go, excuse me, this is my territory. And it will start to rise up and be like, I need to do something about this. So we need to make decisions, people. We need to run. We need to quit. We need to change this. We need to do something um, different. We need to create a new job. We need to move. We need to divorce. We need to, and it's all big decisions. And the ego is doing it from the gut. And you, you might mistaken it this month for a gut instinct when really it's the ego just going, I'm rattling the cages because I don't feel safe. I'm being challenged. And, and so if I feel like I'm being challenged, I'm just gonna stand up and confidently say, these are the choices we need to make so I can stay in control. And so for the month of August, um, just, just relax, <laughs> just, let go of the bar, unwhite knuckle your fingers, take a big breath, and just bring more calm, pause, and peace into the month. Because that big photonic light, that high frequency energy grid that's bathing the earth, that coming in along with how the planets are in alignment, giving tons of creativity and like ingenuity and um, just really fun, bright, open, anything is possible energy with high frequency, it's going to shake the ego a little bit. So when you're getting those hits of, I have to have this change now, and some of you have been already having it, and you're thinking, I'm having it every day, I'm having it every day, so I need to take action, I need to take action. I hope you see my face or hear me just go, shh, don't do it. Just don't do it. Unless you are physically unsafe and you need to make those choices for your own security and safety, then do it. But if it is like this nag, it's going to probably happen in an, another month long. And then as we get into September, you'll be more clear headed about it. The ego will be a little bit more calm. I'd like for you to take the month of August and say, let's be friends with the ego as it's loud and rowdy and wanting to lead us into change um, and, and severe change, like radical change. It's like you knew all your life you never liked lemons and you would never have a lemon to save your life. And now all you want is lemons. It's crazy. You're like, I have to have this. I can't. I don't, you know, I, everything I knew before is wrong. Everything I know now is right. I mean, there are going to be real radical changes within self. And just know that if you're doing it, the person to your right is doing it. The person to your left is doing it. And so if that's the case, if we're all working with this rattling of the cage of the ego and doing this spiritual awakening with the high frequency energy coming in, who's taking care of who? Because the whole earth is doing it. Even plants are going through it. There's going to be more plant life going into extinction than ever before. Especially in the oceans. They're going to change drastically over the next few years. And so you're going to think with all of this change and dying, we'll never be the same. 
well, you're never the same each day. Look at what is working and look at what evolution is doing for people, spiritual awakening, for plants and evolution, for animals and evolution and spiritual awakening. Like look at a broader picture. And if you're rattled, what are the things that you're going to do to keep yourself together? I'd like to suggest pause, hold your tongue. I mean, not like this, but look, don't, you don't have to speak all the time. Even though August 4th through the 12th, um, that little phrase is all going to be about real direct, real direct communication. And it might be that your introvert who normally doesn't speak up wants to speak up really loud. And, and then all of a sudden afterwards, you're like, what did I say? What did I just do? Oh, gosh. Or you who never interrupted others interrupt. Or you that would never interfere with another situation speak out. Like this is a speak out phase. So I'd be very connected to your throat and the pause movement and just ask yourself, you know, is this in my best interest to speak up? And what am I really going to be saying here? And why do I really need to say this? What do I want to convey to the other person? You have to know these things before opening your mouth. If not, it's just going to go on and on and on and on and on. And you're just dripping your energy out and in not investing it in great places, which can wear you down quite a bit. Or you might end up on the receiving end of somebody else who is just pouring out words and it's not making sense and it doesn't feel comfortable. You know, and, and how do you speak up very directly and say, I appreciate you talking to me, but, you know, I have somewhere to be or I cannot be present with you at this time. So can we do this in another way? Or can you put this in writing so I can see it clearer? It is time to practice some good communication. And August will give it to you from like the 4th through the 12th. So the first week is really kind of, uh, I feel like I need to react really big and make change. But you got to ask yourself, is it really in your best interest? Most likely the answer is going to be no. It's just way new energy. And you're like, oh, it's all kind of hard to breathe and hard to be in it. So we feel like we have to scramble and do something new to make ourselves feel settled when really it's just practicing accepting the high frequency energy so we can get used to it. And then the fourth or the 12th is like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then there's there's a tiny part in the fourth or the 12th where there's a lot of direct communication, like the sixth, seventh, and eighth can be very frustrating. The planets are gonna be changing a lot at that time and they're gonna be like um, counterproductive to each other is the best way I know how to explain it. So if you're really agitated and frustrated on those days, just know it might not be you. As a sensitive, you might be reflecting what the earth is pushing back out and trying to participate in the layout of a bigger scene in the universe and just take a few deep breaths and wait for the ninth to roll around where you can go, okay, I'm feeling a little normal again, that's good. And then from the 12th on, really, it's just more of that expansive um, silver lining, hope, creative, lots of creativity. So the chakra that's being challenged and needed, but mostly challenged is going to be the sacral chakra. That's the one that processes change and um, creation a lot. And you want to be aware of your belly. Now, a lot of you who aren't connected to your chakra energy, and maybe you have friends who aren't as awake to energy that you carry, you might find that they are just hungry. They are just, they just got to eat all like, especially, no, I'd say almost all of August, you might just find yourself like a hungry, hungry monster oh, snacking this. And it's almost like because of those energy shifts in your chakra system, the sacral is using a lot of that energy, which is right in your digestive system. And sometimes that can be sensed as a false hunger because it's not in your tummy. It's in like the intestinal track and um so people will mistake in it and feed it food rather than thought frequency you can um, also use fire carnelian which is the stone i pick for the sacral 
and um, it's got a lot of high frequency and I know there's a lot of high frequency already going through the sacral, but I think if you're more in control over it and you're applying it just below the belly button, you can hold it in your hand and place it there. You can even put it around your bed, but if you're having a hard time sleeping, I would not put it around your bed. I would put the other two that I'm gonna talk about around your bed, but um, I would just wear it then during the day or keep it with you like on your desk. And you simply looking at it and thinking about stones and crystals can bring that frequency into your body. But what we wanna do is help feed the sacral chakra the energy that it needs. And you can do that simply by pairing up with crystals like fire carnelian. So that will help and it will decrease your appetite, your false hunger. Um, I would keep a journal by for the month of August because you're going to have a lot of great ideas. You really are. You're like, oh, I've never thought about that before. I wonder if somebody's ever done that. I bet there are more domain names purchased in August than there was in July or September. Is it, wait, Jen, June, July, August, September. I have it right. <laughs> um, so lots of creativity. I want you to write it down so that you can be with it rather than reacting, 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 because you might find that if you're constantly reacting to this wild energy in August, even though it feels like a silver lining and very hopeful, you might reach some dead ends because the practice really is about accepting the high frequency energy not reacting to it. The reaction is to be triggered of, oh, I have to do this, it has to be big, it has to do this. Calm down. And to help you calm down, the chakra that's being supported the most um, um, or needed the most, no, supported the most, is the crown chakra. So sacral is being challenged, crown on top of your head, that one is being supported and the crystal that i would like to use for this month is called grape agate and it looks like little grapes are growing in it you can get them all kinds of sizes little open chips it doesn't have to be in a sphere this one's just different and sometimes they're big enough where you can just get a few of the grapes again size doesn't matter um, it's really nice to put around your bed and it's nice to keep with you all the time. I don't think I've ever met a stone that would not like grape agate or a person's energy who would not like it. It's very gentle. It has more of a feminine, slow shifting, calm energy, which is terrific. It works with the crown chakra like I said, who's being supported because we're getting all the high frequency energy in. So this is the chakra that's gonna be doing a lot of the work for you so that you can use that acceptance of the frequency and embody it. The um, grape agate harmonizes the crown and the third eye together, which is good because the third eye is the one that's being needed the most, needed, supported, challenged, the sacral down low beneath your belly button. Gray bucket is very good for sleep as well. And it's very good in helping you have um, a premonition sleep where your dreams are linked to your guides and angelic beings and you get messages and downloads, which um, there's going to be like for the full moon, August, 27th? I can't remember when the full moon is. But the full moon this month is all, it's, it's a big download of energy. And so it'd be nice to have the grape agate around you. It says August 11th. The full moon? Mm -hmm. The full moon on the 11th. <laughs> or the 12th, the two. That's what I was thinking of, the two. Um, that's right, because that's the end of the direct communication phase in August. You're gonna love it. Watch the news between the 4th and the 12th. I know news is like watching a movie these days. Is it real? I don't know. Not half of it's real, but um, it's entertaining. I have some questions for you. Uh -huh. Do you wanna talk about the next stone first? No. Or, okay. Um, so one of the questions is, do we need to make sure our crystals are cleansed and charged? How do we do that? Um, 
You can charge and cleanse crystals by pairing them with black tourmaline and selenite. And then you wouldn't have to do anything. You would be just like self-sustaining. It would always clean it and then boost it. And then it would process all over again. Most stones do really well in a short amount of sunlight, but you know, your quartz that are really bright or even your citrines, you know, yellows, amethyst, purples, pink quartz, you don't want to leave them in the sun too long because it can dull their, um, like it burns the color out of them. So if you're doing direct sunlight, I would say like 30 minutes to an hour for some of them, but I like moonlight a lot. And Jamie does this thing where she, um, to clean her crystals and to reset them, she gets table salt and she gets a platter it has different compartments in it so she can put different crystals in each one and she pours the salt over them and she leaves them overnight and then she takes them out. Salt absorbs and cleans anything that's stuck to your crystals. It's very easy to do and it doesn't require moonlight, sunlight, timing, water, anything like that. And then she takes the salt and puts the salt in the sun to clean the salt. And of course, you don't have to worry about it losing its color because it's white already. And then um, she'll reuse it after it's been cleansed. So those are some ways. Um, simply giving love to your crystals is an easy way to clean them. Clean them. I don't want you to think that it takes a lot of effort to clean. It doesn't. It intuition and energy healing things of that nature can happen very quick. It's not like 3D human action where it's really linear and you have these steps to hit and, and the result to get and you have to do it correctly or else you have to start over. I don't want you to go down that rabbit hole. Think quick, easy, very direct. If you have clean thoughts, meaning there's nothing else jumping in and bombarding your thoughts and you can focus on one thing, that direct energy will clean the chakras or clean the crystals. So that was the great package. Um, the third eye is the one who's going to be needed. And for the third eye, I'm choosing trolleyite. It's like a blue. Sometimes it, it aligns with the throat chakra a lot, which is good for the fourth through the twelfth. But this one is a great sleeper stone too. And this Grape agate would also pair well with amethyst if you're having trouble resting and getting rid of your anxiety and you're running thoughts just to be able to go to sleep. Like you could put those three together and just, just check out. But Trulliite is also really good to help you decipher what your dreams are. Whereas grape agate is more like, let's have the dreams, let's have them. And this one's like, well, let's process them and let's accept them and get the information that we needed from them. It's a great big harmonizer. It's really big with um, alignment of your soul. And it's also a high frequency chakra, even though it looks and feels very, very dense. It's not delicate at all, but it has a high frequency energy in it, uh, which is needed because that's what you are doing currently for the month of August is processing a lot of high current energy for your aromatherapy, I say cedar wood. That's it. Just a few drops of that. I think if you wanted to add anything to it, I would add rosemary. But I would use cedar wood. I would do at least four or five drops in your diffuser. And if you wanted to add rosemary, then I would do three cedar wood, three rosemary. Rosemary is really good for your lungs and sinus tissues and everything of that nature. So if you're feeling worn down from the summer and from the various strange viruses and colds that are going around, then having that rosemary in, and cedar wood is actually a really good healer of the lungs as well, but um, rosemary is known for it. It will help you stay healthy and keep your immune system up as you're processing all that high frequency energy. So another thing that I wanted to mention is um, in August, the confusion. Um, confusion. Can I ask a question before you get going? And I'll remind you about mm -hmm. the confusion. The trolleyite that you were talking about, I have a couple different spellings that I'm finding. Can you confirm that? T 
R O L L I E T E. Okay. I have, so the one I had typed in was wrong. So, Trolletti? So it's like troll, like a troll, troll under a bridge. Yes. Okay. Okay. So that's I the. Etty. I, I typed it up on the. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It's not the most common of, of ones to know. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, it's loud. Sorry. And I had a question about the third eye as well. Um, does this mean that we will be able to access our third eye in August, even if we haven't before? Oh, that's what yes. Catherine is asking. Catherine, that's a great question. It is. And manifestation skills are going to be up really quick because it's high frequency that you're being bathed in. A lot is going to be sped up and that's going to be leading to the confusion that I was talking about. But I would focus on that, which you want to manifest because it's going to happen quicker. But be, um, I don't know how to say it. I want to say be smart, but I don't want to sound like a smart ass. <laughs> um, be wise. You say what you need to say. Okay. <laughs> be wise in choosing what you want to manifest. You know, like really sit down and, and go, is that what I need? Is that for my highest, you know, purpose? For my highest health, wealth, and purpose? It's not like... Um, Willy nilly, just haphazard. I want you to really say that's what I want to manifest for my life, and that's who I want to be. So it's really time to look at who do you want to be when you grow up. And even if you're 89, I want you to ask yourself, who do I want to be when I grow up? And make those changes. Look for them to manifest. And it'll be a, a faster manifestation. And then you have to be aware that when it's happening to you, you go, oh, thank you. Because can I share a personal example of Jamie? I don't know what it is. So I'm going to say yes, as long okay. as she says yes. Okay. It's, yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. Um, so she's um, looking at building a neighborhood. And it's an off-the-grid neighborhood, uh, but modern with... Um, um, internet and stuff. So she was needing help for some web designs and was thinking that she would just do it on her own time. And But she was calling for manifestation and abundance for people to come forward and, um, and assist. And then she had someone come forward and say, I would love to do the whole website and the imagery and everything. And then do you know what she did? Oh, that's so sweet. It's fine. It's fine. And we were all screaming at her, the top of our head. Like, you got to know when your manifestation is working and then be able to receive it. So if you're trying to manifest it and you don't even have the strength to say yes and receive it, what are you doing? And so she had to go back to the person and be like, okay, my apologies. I would like to accept your help. And I'm very humble. Thank you. So, but it, it's fun to give examples like that because, you know, we're looking at somebody who's who's been open to manifestation and all this energy and wanting to normalize it and still she struggles with it sometimes. So it's just stay conscious, stay present, stay alert to what you're doing so that you don't get so confused. And why isn't this working? Because you might be blocking it and you're trying to manifest it. And every time it comes, you block it and you block it off. So fire carnelian will help with all of that creativity and keep it open and keep it flowing. So that'll be more useful. And I said, I would remind you, you were talking about confusion. <laughs> That's yeah. the confusion yes. is the <laughs> frequency of the energy is so high and fast that sometimes as we're accepting it, we just, we think we're nuts. <laughs> we think, um, that we're crazy or we look at what somebody else a friend is doing and you've known them for a long time and they would never say anything harmful or do anything wrong to you and then they are and you're like why are you doing that you know it can break your heart and be sad but just know that everybody is going through something really big and deep and personal on their own and um it's it's august is like let's get together let's be one let's be unity Let's be community. And so we're all going through this and we're all pretending like we're doing it by ourselves and we're not talking a lot to others. 
But as soon as you speak up, you're like, oh, my other friend is doing that too. And I'm feeling that as well. And I am. And then you realize I'm not alone. It's like we're flushing out these deep things to get us to be vulnerable and see the power in our vulnerability and come together. People are going to come together like never before. So that's going to be fun to watch. Communities. Um, there's going to be communities being built. That's why Jamie's getting such a big, I have to do this community. Um, and there's many of you luminaires out there who are doing the very same thing. So stick to it. It's not a pipe dream. But just because things aren't happening right away doesn't mean you, you need to walk away. Slow down. Pause is momentum. Breathe. Relax. Take notes. Right? It's not like we want you to slow down so much you forget everything. Mary says, be wise in manifesting and graceful in receiving. Yes, that is it. Can we make that the quote for <laughs> August? That's a good quote for August. It's a great quote for August. Thank you, Mary. Was there any other questions about the information in August? I have a question about the economy for August. Okay. And I know you like economy questions. I do. Um, this is from Johnny. I have a question about the digital economy. When do you foresee cryptocurrency going up again in value? And what do you think will be better to hold for the long term, Bitcoin or Ethereum? I don't know. I tend to side with Bitcoin, but it's, I mean, it's kind of crashing and burning for a little while. There's only like a few days in, in August where it seems like it's going to be pretty good, like kind of around the 16th and the 17th. It's like a little bit hopeful, but then it's just like, like pushing down again and again. August is just not the month. So if you already have investments there, um, you can choose just to sit, leave. It will come back. It's not disappearing. It will come back. Um, but if you were asking one over the other, I think I would still lean towards Bit Bit Bitcoin. <laughs> I was going to say calm, and I was like, that's not the word. Bitcom, Bitcoin. So many sounds in the language sound alike. Um, so I would probably look more towards uh, September or October or later in the year for it to really have its revival. Um, it's, it's struggling because there are other banks and companies that are coming up with their own kind of uh, digital money. And it's almost going to be a, like a digital warfare. Another kind of warfare is going to be water. And specifically for those like California, Nevada, Colorado, in the United States. And of course, there's been parts of Africa and Australia as well, and dire need of good water. But um, um, rivers and lakes and things of that nature are shifting and changing. And, and what you'll hear more about that later in August through October. And um, stuff will come on the news and you'll think, well, that's not true because I've never heard of it before. And it's like news come way too late, where you're like, we could have made change or effort. Education is very valuable, but it's just not coming forward as fast as it's needed. If you wanted and you don't have digital investments and you wanted to invest, I would still stick with very tangible items. So property is very tangible. Um, gold and silver which are still very like low at this point, I would say in my opinion. And then you could um, hold on to those. And those are more of a long-term turnaround, not a short investment. So if you need short-term investments, I'm just gonna kind of shrug my shoulders right now because everything is really volatile as things settle in. Um, so nothing is tanking, but everything is making a change. You know, to remain constant is to always change because change is the only thing constant. I have some water questions. Yeah. Well, Julia asked um, a question about is the Earth's response to all the energy shifts, some of this flooding that's happening right now? And then also she's asking, how do we prepare for the water shortage in California? I don't want my trees or plants to die in my yard. That's very difficult. Um, 
Well, some of the places in California and some places around the world already have um, laws on how much rainwater that you can collect because the reservoirs need to have that rainwater to build back up. So collect what you can per the regulations of your community and, and county. And then I would look at, um, I don't know the exact name, but I like to call it um, like a like a weaving well. We well, don't dig into the ground, but it's um, a structure that you make above ground and it's consisted of all these wires or um, strings that um, collect the moisture in the air and it trickles down and it collects into a container. So basically you'd be collecting some of the fog and um, uh, moisture that's in your air naturally. And I think that's a really good way of collecting water. There was another one, the floods. Yes. Yes, the energy shifts that are coming, the high frequency energy, the photonic light coming in, the earth is doing floods. And then you're also going to see some really crazy activity. Um, late August, September, October, November. I mean, kind of equivalent to the year prior that you saw with all the intense, strange tropical storms and hurricanes and the earthquakes have been going on. I mean, the Philippines just had a big earthquake. Like the earth is, she's shaking, she's shaking her waist. I was gonna say her booty. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna be feeling it. But um, if you pay attention, it's everything that you can um, help and control. And if you are somewhere in an earthquake zone and you don't feel confident or comfortable with the reports that are coming out and you, all, you want to know in advance what's going on, then you need to watch the wildlife um, or go to the lost and found section. And if the lost and found of animals triples than what it is, then just know that an earthquake is coming because they sense it way far in advance. And so the animal that. companions in particular. Yeah. I just wanted to make clarity. On Cats that. and animals. Yes. And even <laughs> in the zoo and stuff, like some of the, there's been elephants and monkeys and tigers that have gotten out because they don't want to be, they don't want to be where the earthquake is. Samantha is asking, is there a way we can work to cool the earth or should breathe with the change and just let things take place? Well, there's beautiful ways that we can work with it. And first and foremost is pollution. It's really important. And to start with the basics, because what I'm going to say might feel like way too much for you to be doing. So just start with one thing at a time. And that would simply, in your recycling, use products that can be recycled. If you look at it and it can't be recycled, go, ah, oh, that's sad because I really like this product, but I'm not going to take it because it can't be recycled. Um, so that's a good intro level, but then start researching factories that produce or make your product or your food or your furniture and see how green they are. What kind of CO2 emissions do they release? And why are they working in that way with knowledge that we have now? Like we could be using solar and wind, which is very green. Um, and we can argue, well, that's another topic. Oh, but so research your factories, know where your stuff comes from. That's the big thing. And um, if we can reduce pollution in that way, we can start rehabbing some of the shifts that are happening on earth. But um, if we continue to live the way that we are, then yes, you're going to need to continue to accept the increasing temperatures in the air and in the oceans and the, um, the effects that it's going to have. Ding. <laughs> Do you want to take some more questions? Are they there? Yeah, there's okay. some more questions. Um, so we have a question from Tadia. She is saying, can you speak about the US dollar and if it if slash when it will collapse? Collapse? Do you mean like a recession? Or compared to other like currencies, like the um What's the European one called? A euro? A euro. <laughs> this is silly. You know that. <laughs> I couldn't remember all of a sudden. Oh, 
Um, it is going to shrink a little bit, but it is going to bounce back because there are so many other countries that are invested into the United States. The United States really doesn't stand on its own anymore. Um, so it's not going to be quite that devastating. But um, there will be a, like a housing, to call them a bubble. She did place. say compared to other currencies. Yeah. Um, it is going to get small compared to other currencies, but it's not going to last forever. So it's not something that I would be super worried about or needing to save in a new way or a different way. And I, do you have anything else that you would like to add? I'm going to do one more question. Okay, do one more question. Yeah, because I know our time. And then, and then you have to come back because I'm going to teach August 4th. Yes. If you're a member on the YouTube channel, then you can come back and we can talk more about the crystals and the aromatherapy and about those specific energy frequencies in the month of August. And also, if you want a transcript of this, then um, you can sign up to Jamie's newsletter at jamiebutlermedium.com. And you can get the newsletter. She forgot to say that at the beginning. She did. I remembered after we started. I try, you know, it's challenging when we're first starting out <laughs> and these energies are coming into the room. <laughs> That's what you get with a live stream. Yes, this is live is. happening now. I love it. I love it. But I'd rather do it this way than record it because I like the interaction. I do too. I do as well. Uh, so the last question I'm going to ask, because I feel like it's important, because all of us are feeling so many different energies, right? Either, yes. Whether it be anxiety or feeling yes. overwhelmed Frustrated. or wanting change. Um, Unica is asking, any tips in particular about finding rest in August? It's hard, too, because you, your mind and your emotional body won't rest very well, even when you tell your physical body to sit down. You're like, sit down. Shh but then your mind is running. So some of the, the crystals we mentioned today, like trolleyite and um, grape agate are very good in calming and anxiety ridden, not ridden, um, removal, like to dampen it down. So you can surround yourself with, with crystals, but I think a physical thing that you can do that's available to everybody that's free is breath work. And I would do breath work. I would specifically do a box breath. And um, Jamie has a box breath on the channel, the meditation one. Can we give that one out? We, yeah, let me figure out how to do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Maybe I can figure out and then I'll post it in the description. Okay. Okay. We'll do a, we'll do like a free code on the website. Okay. okay. Um, so that you can um, breathe. That will re-trigger your neurotransmitters. It'll re-trigger the way the brain is processing um, the thoughts and the energy. And it will also help you figure out what you're perceiving and what you're creating. So that's the difference between intuition and imagination. And sometimes when we get into anxiety, our imagination gets way bigger and gets ahead of us. And then we start to believe in it and it starts to create all these triggers and the energy around us gets really muddy and it's hard to maneuver. So when we do breath work, it's kind of clearing away the mud and the thickness and we get into identifying what's coming in for us and what we're creating. So breath work is huge. If breathing for some reason is not your thing, but I think it is because you're alive and you're listening to this, um, then I would do forced breathing. I would say a forest is at least 15 trees or more. So it doesn't have to be extremely big, but get out there in the middle of it and stay for 15 minutes. After five minutes, you start to produce certain endorphins and serotonin just by being around trees. Like you have no idea how connected you really are to the planet Earth. So use it to your benefit. And then when you stay for 15 minutes, those are more permanent lasting um, endorphins rather than just a quick bump. It stays with you. And if you start to do this routine daily or every other day where you end up around trees, um, your body starts to maintain those levels and you have a natural state of content, happy, um, optimistic outlooks, things of that nature. So those would be the things that I would go for. 
Thank you I so really much. like talking to all of you. And if you enjoy the channeled energy update, share it with a friend, tell somebody else you can like it. It really um, helps all of us reach more people because I, I feel the more people we can inform or just reach and just have conversations about the energy that's around us, the more we're going to enjoy this spiritual awakening, this ascension that's happening to all of us. And the more we'll kind of remove the veil that's over our eyes that say we need to be more 3D or this way, more asleep, like zombies. We don't have to be zombies anymore. Okay. I'll see you later, alligators. After a while, crocodile. I'll see you soon, Babu. Okay, here's a new one from B. Oh, oh stop. Have some tea, manatee. <laughs> Have some tea, manatee. Oh my gosh, did you know Jamie was in the Gulf of Mexico and they were standing in the ocean. She was about shoulder deep and then something touched her leg. And then her mother was like, oh, look at that. Could it be a shark? And we turned around and it was a huge manatee swimming what? by her. He's like the size of a cow. She jumped into her father's arms and screamed. It was, she was not graceful about it. And then the manatee just swam away. Got to get some tea. What is it? Have some. Have some tea, manatee. Have some tea, yep. manatee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Maitland. <laughs> Thank you, we everybody, appreciate you. for and we'll playing see you this week. week. Yes. Oh, gosh, we're going to be doing so many things this week. Yes. I'll see you in the crystal class. Yeah. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>